Hello and welcome back. By looking at what I've got, you can probably tell we today we're making the carrot soup. Now the reason I'm doing quite a few soups lately is because the last one I did was tomato and basil soup, which basically to compare the two soups fresh to ready made. But this time I just want to do a soup because everyone has those times where they buy a massive thing of tomato or a massive thing of carrots or a massive thing of mushroom and they only use half and the date is literally tomorrow or they've got half left and the date was like two days ago and you're like how on earth am I going to eat all these mushrooms literally or all these carrots just literally make them into the soup and it's a nice tasty way of eating them and it uses them up so today I'm going to show you how to do that with carrots so I'm making a carrot soup to use them carrots up that you may have left and not used so let's get into the video please like and subscribe for more and let's get into it so obviously I'll be chopping a lot of carrots today because we're doing a carrot soup. So I need to get my chopping board. So basically it's pretty much the exact same way as doing the tomato soup. But I'm not comparing it to a ready made one. I'm just simply doing a carrot soup to show you what to do with vegetables that are either about to go off or vegetables you don't know what to do with or vegetables that have maybe gone off a few days ago and you're like they are slayable but what do I do with them and there's so many I can't use all these at once and then if I use some wait a few days the others will be completely gone off so this is how to use your vegetables up so the first thing we need to do is need a pan of water on with some stock now we need, a, we need a jug to measure out the water because we need 900 millilitres of water. No, 900 millilitres. Yeah, 900 millilitres of water. You can use it straight out of the kettle as well. It's cheaper if you do it my way. I'm going to put the pan actually, the jug actually in the pan. I think you can tell you're going to need a lot of carrots for this. It's not just carrot. You do normally put celery and onion and stuff in it. But for some reason, I cannot for the life of me find celery in the shop. And then I asked some guy about some basil I needed. And then, he, and then I asked, do you have any celery at the same time? And he couldn't even find it. He said, I don't think we do because I can't find it. So, so I'm going to not put that on just yet and with the other one I put two cubes in the tomato one today I'm going to put two cubes in again so technically there's ten cubes in this packet if you use well it depends on the mass of the soup you're doing but if you're just doing a standard amount of soup not loads and loads and loads I would, the soup, the tomato and basil soup, I think, was like three or four portions. This one's probably about the same. Like the last soup I did, tomato and basil soup, that filled three full bowls. But obviously, not everyone has a full bowl at a time, because that might be a bit much, especially when it's only really like a starter. So, theoretically, this, if you do a normal amount of soup for like three or four people, Use two sock cubes at a time. You can make five soups out of this. If you're doing like a massive bucket full of soup for like 20 people, obviously you're going to need double, probably. But you can, if you're just doing a standard amount of soup, you can make five different, five different soups, like two cubes each, ten cubes. So I need to quickly get a big pan out. So I can toss my carrots straight into them when they're peeled. And because it's literally, um, because it's literally just a carrot soup, we'll be chopping quite a lot of carrots. So I now need to find a knife, an appropriate knife to cut my. 
Why is that knife? I had a knife, I don't know where it's gone. I was literally just using a knife. Found it. This is the knife I'm using. And because you're doing a soup, it's literally rough chop. So you can probably get about 10 carrots in the pan in no time at all. So let's have this peel back. Take the end off. Take the top off. Down, 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 down. You don't want them all as, like that chunky because they've all got to be reasonable the same size. And obviously when you go down the carrot, the carrot gets smaller, so. You try and do the bigger end, a bit thicker, so then it's just the same as the smaller end. If you do the top end, like bigger than you would do the bottom end, then they're all about the same time. I'm gonna put this on so it's tough. They need to be boiling before I can add it to the soup. So you're trying to do the top end nice and thin. So then they're roughly the same size to the end of the um, and they're roughly the same size as the end of the carrot and they all cook the same. Obviously. Or you just do the end bit chunky. Either way. I've literally just peeled carrots, these carrots are pretty good, they're like really really big and in I can't remember what video it was. Maybe the carrot soup, maybe the tomato soup video. I had to put one carrot in. Um, one of the videos I used a I think it was a tomato soup video. I had to put one big carrot in or two small ones. Um, but the recipe I was following, and um, that carrot was absolutely huge. So it's just rough chop, but you have to rush chop them the same as every piece the same. Well roughly the same time. I don't like a chunky bit of a tiny bit. You need them more to cook. Look at that carrot for example. Two carrots in itself. Very weird, it's very good bag carrots. Weird carrots like this and most of them are humongous carrots. Now let's try and get in the middle and peel the middle bit off. You can literally peel and chop carrots. Peel and chop carrots in literally no time at all. Obviously that carrot was quite skinny so obviously they're going to be smaller than the other bit, the other pieces but I'm just doing a little bit chunkier and getting them as close to the same as possible. Why is that top bit like extremely hard to cut? and that carrot was impossible to cut. I'm not really sure why. I think I might just use all the carrots that are left. As you saw my tomato video, tomato soup one, there were so many. I, had, I think I had nine tomatoes or something. When did you go I had 12 tomatoes and I think I used Nine of them, what I meant to say. Then in the tomato soup, this is going to take around I would say 20 minutes to boil once the stock's in and you put half in straight away if you definitely need half the stock and the second half you may not need it all so 
had a bit of time. So I always had half, and then gradually had the second half. You may not actually need it all. So quickly chopping these. So there's no carrots left. So that's my carrot. And I'm going to add two shallots into it. And obviously I'm going to add carrot and coriander. Now, I didn't really, I thought in the shop carrot soup. I didn't think in the shop carrot coriander, which I should have done because it's additional to have carrot and coriander. So now it's kind of like, do I even have any? Do I even have any um, coriander? So that is one thing I need to find out as soon as this soup is or I need to get some oil in it to fry the carrots and stuff. And then I just need to let it boil for like 20 minutes. Once I've salt and peppered and carrot and hopefully I have some. But I've, that one thing that didn't cross my mind. Literally rough chops that don't have to be. If they're that small they will, the, the shallot needs to be quite big. Because otherwise it will be cut way before the carrots. So I'm going to get my oil. There is quite a lot of carrot in here. So I need to get a wooden spoon. I could probably use the same wooden spoon for both pans. It is all going to be mixed together anyway. Mosh my hands. For some reason, whenever you have an oil, you always get. You always, whether your hands are oily, whether you feel your hands are oily. So I need to get a spoon. I'm just going to toss my vegetables Around about eight carrots, I think. I'm not even sure. I could probably add all the top of the kale and figure out how many I've got. But. I'm now going to break up the cube. It should dissolve quite, it should break up nice and easily. Until the water's boiling. Until the stock goes in, you have to keep mixing the carrots. Now I'm going to pour half in, I always put half in, you always need to leave half. You don't always need all the second half. Definitely, definitely need more stuff in, but for now we have enough. Smells amazing. Now I've got to go in my cupboard. I'm going to add some salt and pepper straight away.
give that salt a mix so I'll put a fair bit in. You can put a lid on your pan if you want the water to boil faster. That's why I have mine on before the carrots, so it's done, but if you don't and you want it boiled quicker, you can just put a lid on it so it doesn't stop boiling. Now I've got parsley, don't need parsley. I doubt I've got coriander to be fair, I've got thyme. I think I have multiple oregano in this cupboard, which I'm not sure why, and I've got veg stock. I've got ground ginger. Yeah, I don't think I've got any coriander, so I may have just put parsley in as well. It would taste nice if I don't put any in. Well, I've got some at the back. Got some massive thing of table salt. I've got coriander leaf. Oh, it's empty. Clear, wasn't that much in there. Should have maybe kept some to put in after because with the basil thing, I've got half. Of I put half a packet in, I put half a packet in and then once it was cooked and blitzed I put the other half in to keep the flavour, so I've run out. But there is a fair bit in there anyway so it should be alright without, and I doubt I have any more so. So one thing I need now is coriander, just keep all spices just in case. Always put a bit of some else in to give it a flavour if I need to. So now I'm going to turn my stock off all together. That's probably actually enough all together actually. Basically at the end, if you want to thicken it or, or unthicken it, you basically add more water or more stock if you have it. If you've run out of stock, just add some more hot water. And then thicken it, just add some flour. This is already boiling, so this should literally be done in like 10 minutes from now, I think. Maybe 15. I'll come back in about 15 minutes when the when the soup is done. The soup has been on for 25 minutes. I've just blitzed it and it's over there. Just over there. And I'm actually going to add some more liquid to it because it's... Um, really, really... Well, quite thick. Even think that looks good. I'm going to be dirty just for water now. So that's a better consistency. So to give you a quick close up of what the soup looked like, it looks delicious. It smells absolutely phenomenal. So I'm just going to quickly try a bit for you guys, and then this video is done. So I need it to cool down a bit. Might have to wait a minute for it to um,
haven't got any soup is the one. I mean, maybe a tomato soup I prefer, but this is quite nice. Nice and delicious. I'll give that an 8 point. Actually, I'll just give it an 8 out of 10. Thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, please like and subscribe for more. And I'll see you in the video tomorrow.